Hey guys, welcome to part two of Vans Service Bulletin number 36. So, um, in the prior video, I showed you drilling out the uh, trailing edge. On this particular spar, we had cracks that went into the flange. So this is kind of a worst case scenario where we're going to have to do a complete sparrectomy and remove the, and replace the spars. We have spars, got them from Vans. Um, <clears throat> not included in the service bulletin kit. We've got the service bulletin kits over, kit parts over here. So because we're doing that, we're going to replace the spar itself. What I did is I just whipped up a nice simple fixture. We want to make sure that the spar does not have any uh, dihedral, anhedral, whatever. We want it to be exactly the way it was when we took it out. So we built a fixture here that will keep it up and down perfect. As far as fore and aft, it's actually kind of wimpy fore and aft. But the trailing edge of the horizontal stabilizer will take care of that. So what we've done is we've uh, disassembled it last time. I just drilled out a whole crap ton of rivets. We got all the rivets out. Um, since that episode, we uh, I went in and stripped these upper and lower doublers uh, or reinforcements. So those have been all stripped. Um, and then we've got the original spar um, and whatnot, the original spar in here. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to replace one spar at a time and then match drill to these. Once I match drill to these reinforcements, then that's set. Then I can lift this up and that will allow me to do the other side. Again, most importantly is we're trying to keep the center in the center. So looking at this, uh, we may have to do a light trim uh, depending on what our, uh, how tight we are in the middle. But that's it. We're going to <clears throat> the inboard center hinge stays in place. It basically stays in the same place. The inboard, this is the center line hinge, the inboard hinge for the horizontal stabilizer. Now remember, this is a 3B, so it's a little bit smaller than your 6s and 4s and the bigger birds. So um, this inboard hinge, that is going to stay in the same place. We'll rivet that back in. That is currently aluminum. Vans doesn't say anything about changing it to steel and whatnot. The outboard hinge will be replaced with steel. So what we're going to do is we can match drill these little little rivet holes on the very tip off of the horizontal stabilizer. What we're going to do here is we have to manufacture new outboard hinges out of steel, replacing the old aluminum ones. So what we're going to do there is we'll do a match template, and we're just going to pick up pilot holes for now. Once we get those kind of set, we'll put our hinges in, go to the drawing, and make sure this is exactly the dimension per the drawing so that we have good parts fit. So that's what's going on here. Um, anyway, that's what I'm going to be doing is uh, taking this out and then drilling a bunch of holes again. So hang on, and uh, we'll go to we'll go to uh, fast motion or whatever. Once I drilled, um, like I said, I'm not going to drill these hinge, outer hinge uh, holes just yet. And then I'll uh, drill these number 10s for the uh, number 10s for the center uh, when I'm all done. But one side all done, you can see here, you can never have enough Clicos. So next step, do the same thing on the other side. Remove this one, fit this in, match drill it over. This actually, it's not that bad a deal. Again, if you're building a horizontal stabilizer from scratch, you got a lot of time in it. This is actually going pretty quick, nice and straightforward. Um, anyway, baby steps. Okay, that went pretty quick. Um, what we're going to do now is pull it out of the fixture, a little fixture here, and uh, snug it snug. Pump the tips out of it. So we've got this pretty well. <clears throat> all of the major drilling 
on the flange, main center flange is done. What we will do now is, um, uh, la, 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 la. oh, another, another thing is I, I looked at it up a little bit with some uh, tongue depressors, so uh, just so we had room for the Clecos. Uh, next step will be to, we've got all these number 11 or number 12 holes drilled, we've got this drilled. I think now we bring the horizontal stabilizer back and we will uh, get it going. So I'll mark this with a Sharpie and um, then we'll bring the horizontal stabilizer and fit it in and get this ready to start drilling to the skins. So, okay, we've got our stabilizer back. Um, it's back on the table. What we're going to be doing now is just putting the spar back in, then clamping it up, and then we're going to drill all of our um, dimpled holes on the trailing edge. Now, biggest thing here is we haven't gotten into service bolt 36 yet. We're doing a spar replacement. So this is kind of a precursor. This is the worst case scenario on a stabilizer that you're going to have to do this. Normally, I would hope that you could come in here on the tip and do your repair if you weren't cracked. You could do your repair by just relieving the trailing edge rivets on the bottom and the tip up to the forward spar and then you could come in here and install this stuff. On this particular aircraft, because it has cracked spar, we're doing a whole deal. Now, if you only had one cracked spar, you're kind of screwed. You're going to have to replace, you're going to have to take out the whole assembly and you could replace a spar. But in for a penny, in for a pound. Um, if your spar is in perfect shape, then yeah, just, I would say, um, just, just do that. But the other thing too is, well, you know, this aircraft here has been ringing around. Um, fatigue, I don't know. It's obviously it got some fatigue issues with the cracking going on. So we're putting two brand new spars in. The owner will feel a whole lot better when he's doing all those wonderful aerobatic stuff. So that's what's going on. So now I'm just going to bring the spar in. And then get it to fit. Now the other thing too is the um, stabilizer is kind of squiffy because the um, because this spar, there's only one spar here. In fact, we'll show it to you. Um, you've only got one spar and it's a looks like it's a piece of 032. So it's kind of squiffy this way. So just be real careful when you're maneuvering it without the rear spar because it's you don't want to bend that. That'd be bad. Okay, so getting all that in. Get that in. And then we're going to tag our inboard ribs because those are kind of a king dimension. That's good. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to get the trailing edge lined up. Uh, clamp it along and then just start drilling a crap ton of holes. So that's what's going on here back Thought I did a time-lapse there. Apparently not. Anyway, the um, Trailing edge is all drilled and clecoed on the uh, got a click on every other hole um, You can never have too many clecos. So that's the way I say it. Um, anyway, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip it and do the bottom I'll try to time-lapse that so that if you, anyone's trying to go to sleep you got a reason to do that, but um, right now everything's looking pretty good, nice and solid. So uh, over it goes, and then we will. Uh, we're clamped up at the tip, and we're clamped in here. And again, what we're doing is we're being mindful of our edge distance and making sure that our skin edge is all nice and straight. So we're doing that. We're clamping these, and then we work from the inside out, drilling. Um, what I'll do on this is I will. Dimple all this when I'm all done, just like you would on a new build, but I'll get this all done. Um, I, we do have, when we do the service bolting, um, when we build it, we're going to be making a nest doubler in here. So for that reason, we'll leave this all undimpled at this point. So uh, anyway, that's coming up. What I'll do is uh, I'll get this drilled and then uh, we'll come back and uh, talk some more.
Okay guys, we've got the spar drilled. It's drilled to the top and bottom skins. It's drilled to the upper and lower doublers. It's drilled to the tip caps. It's still it's drilled to the root rib. So it's pretty well, we're now back to having a good aircraft. So we have a spar replacement. Again, not part of 36, but um, this one had six spars. So we're gonna, um, now I'm just gonna flash forward. Uh, we're gonna go and take this out. Um, and then what I'm gonna be doing is making some uh, transfer patterns off of the old spars to locate the new hinges and all that stuff and the doublers and the nest doubler and basically getting back into 36. So here we go. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna transfer the location of the outboard hinge fasteners. I'm gonna transfer that. I'm only gonna bring them up to number 40, 330 seconds. They're normally a eighth inch number 30, but I'm only gonna bring them up to number 40 at this point because this will give me my location. I've got to get the hinge material bent, uh, the steel parts bent, cut, fitted, and all that. So I'm going to hang off on that just for now. So I'm going to get that done. The other thing is the uh, that will help me locate my backing plates. So I want to get that done. And then I also want to get my nest doubler, get my nest doubler located and then trimmed and all that. So there's actually quite a bit of work on the nest doubler. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just making a transfer, hole pattern transfer tool. Um, and what I'll, it's just a strip of metal. It's a sacrifice. It'll end up going in the trash. And then, um, so what we're doing is we're drilling number 30s. We'll pick up about a half dozen of these, get them as long as possible. That will keep the angular slop out of the way. And then these will bring up to number 40s. I've got this marker, half right hand, half right hand. So here we go, same program, time lapse. Okay, that was kind of quick. So now I've got my pattern. I have my first two rivets, or pardon me, first two holes here on these big doublers is, uh, are these right here. I'll just mark those, zoom, zoom. And then we're gonna bring our spar over here which is, yeah, those will be these rivet holes right here, right there. So then, this is forward. I'll keep everything going the same way. Still got this thing all assembled, so I'm just kind of leaving it that way for now. <clears throat> so this will keep us where we need to be. The biggest thing is these two up here are keying everything. We come in here. We're going to change up to number 40. We're in at number 40 already, and then drill. Okay, that's it. That's pretty pretty well it. We just located these. I'm gonna go to time lapse again. We'll do the other side. Easy peasy. This um, tool right here has outlived its usefulness and it is ready to go in the scrap. So that's all it was for is just to locate our hinge on that one side. Do I want to use it on the other side? No. I know they're just there's no way these two can be exactly the same, so we'll end up using uh, a fresh one for the other side. So here we go back to time lapse. Okay guys, that's about it for drilling the spar. We've got our pilot holes here set up our outboard hinges. I think what we're going to do is we're going to break this episode here. I know, hey, I want to know what's going on. 
we're going to break the episode here. The reason is, is these nesting doublers are going to require quite a bit of trim. So I want to spend some time on that. The other thing is, these and these are the um, HS316 nesting doublers. Those are actually going to require quite a bit of trim. The other thing is, these doublers here, the HS718B, um, they're also going to require trim because they're kind of one size fits all for the uh, some of the aircraft. So this will end up needing to be trimmed so we can be inside the mold, inner mold line of the skins. So these will have to be trimmed. In addition, our hinges have to be fabricated. So there's going to be a lot going on. So now we are ready to do surface bolt 36. So we've got it started, getting everything ready to go. We've got our new spars in place. So we're in pretty good shape. So anyway, see you guys next episode. Go fly yourself. Hangar rats. Service Bolton 36 Vans Aircraft.